What's going on guys? It's your boy Sister. There's a video here today because a brand new video how to make a very own cool, simple, clean overlay done in After Effects and Photoshop. So if you guys didn't know for the past two months or so for client work and just anything that I have to do about overlays, I've been doing these really cool overlays where it's basically just like a nice little bar right at the bottom and just makes it look super clean with the actual outside of the actual canvas or your uh, webcam canvas, just like super just like bare bones and clean and seamless. I think that is super nice. It's kind of a 2020 trend. I thought I would give you guys a really cool idea of how to actually make one yourself with also animating the actual little icons like the follow icon and the actual subscriber icon just to rotate every one minute or so just to make it look a little more fresh and clean as well um so yeah it's super easy to do very easy to customize as well at certain steps i just show you guys how to make you know own customization with it taking the other, uh, other colors or just adding some textures to it greatness to it if you guys would choose to do so and you can just make endless different variations of these cool little overlays here and it's super freaking easy to do so hopefully i made it easy for you guys to learn and just follow along and that's it hope you guys do enjoy today's video today if you guys did don't forget to leave a like and as always guys love you guys and just hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you <laughs> all right guys to get to building your overlay it is as simple as these next few steps First, the document size I use is 1920 by 1080, and I have the resolution set to 300. After making your document size, I think it's best to actually have a screenshot of your webcam and fill in the space of the actual document size to fit perfectly. That way, you set yourself up for measuring your actual camera overlay to match your camera resolution. Next, size your screenshot down to a size you find perfectly matches exactly what you would like. Then, using the rectangle marquee tool found by pressing M on your keyboard for the shortcut, Make a box that goes from one end of your screenshot to the other end. You'll also know when it's perfectly hitting the edge as you would have smart guidelines on. It's in your window settings if you guys do not have it on already. But a pink guideline shows up that you're actually lining it up with another layer. Also, while moving your marquee tool at any point in time, if you start at the wrong place, you can also hold your space bar and actually move the selection while it's still active. Then on a new layer, right click on your selection and choose fill, drop down, color, and fill it with whatever color you guys see fit. Then, after you fill your first shape, you want to make a new layer and right click on that new layer and choose the option Clipping Mask. Then, use the shortcut M on your keyboard rectangle marquee tool to make another box and fill it with another color that will actually have your name or your logo in it. And of course, give it enough space so you can perfectly fit either your name or your logo inside. Then, what I like to do is I like to make a duplicate of the first original box by selecting the actual layer itself. And while holding Alt on my keyboard, I want to drag it right below the layer to make a copy. Then, using the drop down arrow key, separating it from its original position by a few pixels and making the box color the same color as my far left box with using the layer style option color overlay. Then, once again, you want to take your original box and make another duplicate by dragging it right below the first copy and lining it up with the rest of your boxes. Then, you guys want to finalize all the icons and text based on what you guys would like to show. So, for me, I use recent follower and recent subscriber as an example. I also use the site The Noun Project in order to find some really cool icons that I can perfectly match the actual text next to it. And by this time, guys, you guys are basically done. Customizing it to be even more than yours rather than just the color, you can simply use some really cool textures or photos you find on Google and clipping mask them to portions of your overlay. So whether if it's some really cool flowers or even some really cool metal texture, you can easily customize your overlay to be even more than what you guys would like to actually go ahead and run with a cool theme. Also, keeping a mental note that clipping mask gradients can also give you a really cool another look to your photos. But once you guys are all done, you want to make a group of everything in your PSD besides your icons or anything else that you'd like to put in motion. Also, deleting your screenshot if you of course had one. You can either select multiple layers by holding control on your keyboard while selecting each and every single one, or using the shift key on your keyboard to select the actual top layer, then while holding shift again still, select the bottom layer, and then it'll select basically everything in between, making it a lot faster for you guys to actually select everything at once. Then following up with either Control G to make a group or just right click merge group from layers. And once you guys do that, I would actually make a duplicate of your group with Control J to make a duplicate, right? And then I would also merge that entire group that you just made a duplicate of together in one single layer by pressing Control E. That way you have now everything that's not in motion in one single layer. Finally, you can use the crop tool on your keyboard to tightly fix your document size to be exactly the size of your overlay. That way it would help you guys out a lot when you're actually sizing it up in uh, OBS. Lastly, save your PSD to a place you can find it and get ready to open up some After Effects. All right guys, now we're inside After Effects. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a really simple, quick animation to make your stagnant overlay just look a little bit better and uh, we're just gonna just jump right into it, okay? So I'm inside After Effects. For us to actually open up our PSD or uh, the things we just saved from Photoshop, we wanna go to where it says File over here, right? Then we wanna go to where it says Import and we wanna choose File once again. And then for this, you want to basically find out where you guys end up saving it. For me, I just like to go to quick access. It just ends up showing you guys your recent files you just uh, saved, by the way. So my last one here should be my actual one that I just saved. If I press import, right, then my import kind, I want my composition to say retain layer sizes. And I also want my layer options to say edible layer styles. Right when it has that, we can press OK and get right into this, okay? So 
You'll notice under your project table, if you guys do not have this open for whatever reason, or whether if you close it on accident, you can press either control zero on your keyboard or windows op, uh, project right here, just like that. Okay. Now just want to make sure you just want to double click on the one that says the type that's composition, not folder, but composition. You just simply just double click on it just like so. And then you guys will have under your actual, actual timeline here. Now is like your layers that you just guys basically made and combined it. And also the two layers that you left alone, which is your icons, or if you wanted to leave uh, your, your text in there too, you might have your text as a free layer as well. Um, so for me, I just have my icons being the star, the heart, and then the actual background being its own single thing, right? So now they have these three layers basically separated. I can go ahead and just animate my icons alone. Okay. Now before I actually animate my icons, I want to make sure my composition actual settings, which if I right click on my timeline, I can just go to composition settings and I want to change my frame rate to about 60 FPS. I believe for you, it's going to be at 29.97, which is 30 FPS. Um, whatever reason I want to put on 60 FPS. Pretty much no reason. I just want to do it and I like to have it at 60 FPS. That way my duration can be at one second. If yours is, if you, it's fine if you leave it at 30 FPS or you're 27.97 or whatever, right? Your duration is going to say like 58.38 like or 2.8 or whatever, just so you guys know. That, okay. That's why if you were to change and press OK, if you leave it at 30 FPS, it'll say something different here for free. For me, we have it at one second or basically one minute, excuse me, then I can press OK, right? <laughs> now we're basically good to go and go ahead and just jump into actually animating this really simply and quickly. So the thing we're going to do is we're going to just click on the actual icon itself, press P on your keyboard. Then I want to have my position open. I can just go to this layer right here. This is the 3d layer. I want to make sure I click on this for both my icons realistically, but I'll just click on one for now, but I'll, oh, I'll click on both. That's fine. Right. And then I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, use my position keyframe x and y whatever reason just want to have those there just in case I want to change my position as well. But realistically, all you have to really have is your y axis, um, keyframe. Right, so for the Y axis is basically gonna rotate us in like a nice, perfect, like keeping our face like perfect, but also just rotating it that way rather than Z axis rotating it like this way, right? So that's what our Y axis is doing. So these numbers are actually telling you right here is basically number of rotations and then the amount that it basically is, right? So for me, I just wanna change this to zero, right? That's the first keyframe. Now, if I just move it up to around maybe like a, let's just say like four seconds, right? Four seconds, and I'm gonna go over here and just change this uh, number of rotations to one. Press enter, and then you guys will notice if I just zoom in for a second, right? If I just go ahead and let it play, it'll basically rotate over the course of four seconds. Really kind of simple and stagnant, but what I wanna go ahead and do is I'm gonna actually easy ease it. So what easy ease does is makes this really simple, stagnant, very point to point movement, but give it a little more flow and a little more like, like just a little more lusciousness. Sure, yep. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna highlight these two keyframes, then I'm gonna right click on one of them. We're gonna go to keyframe assistance and go to easy ease. It'll change your simple keyframes to an actual little hourglass. And then you wanna go to this layer right here, which is the graphic editor. Under the graphic editor, I wanna highlight just like so. Zoom in if you guys want to with this bar right here. Then I'm gonna take this yellow uh, anchor handle, right? I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push this in. Then I'm gonna push this left one over here, excuse me, the right one to the left as well, inward. Right, so if I go back to this little four second mark, you'll see if I press play, it'll be a more sort of very fluid movement. It just makes it look super, super clean. And that's exactly the same thing I'm gonna do for this other one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna just press P on my keyboard, turn on the layer, it's already on, perfect. I'm just gonna actually click on it again so I can bring it up again. Y axis, and for me, I'm gonna go to four seconds once again. I'm gonna take this one, highlight them both, click on it, key from assistance, easy ease. You can see how very, very simple this is. Push this in, push this in open this and I'm going to actually move this a little bit further over towards the middle. That way we have like one thing rotating and it kind of feels like it's passing it to the actual uh, subscriber one. So if I press play, boom, this is going to start rotating. Then it kind of passes it onto this one, right? So it kind of looks really cool sort of like flowy motion towards the actual thing. So then what happens at the end is it's going to go for basically one full minute. And after the full minute, right? When it gets to the full minute, if you guys have your OBS option five on loop, it'll just kind of reset itself and go, Hey, we're going to spin again. Basically the size of your actual composition or excuse me, your timing of your composition, if you have it at one second, it'll take one second, uh, one minute, excuse me. But if you want it to have 30 seconds, it rotates every 30 seconds. You just basically change your duration to from one minute to 30 seconds. Okay. So by the way, it goes milliseconds here. Then this is now including your seconds. This is minutes. And then this is hours. Just so you guys know if you're not new to after effects, right? Or new to after effects, right? So now that I have that done, it's as simple as that. I want to add a little bit more, just like a weird motion element to it. If I just actually click on this right here, it enables motion blur. If I click on that, I'm also going to make sure I click on this right here and this box right here. That way it enables it for the actual layers. And it's just going to add a little bit of motion blur. Whether if you guys see it or not, it's not too quick or of a, a big of a whoosh, but it also adds a little bit more, again, kind of like that nice quality feel to it. Um, realistically, if you can't really notice too much, if you ever do anything other big movements and you add some motion blur, it will show up. 
okay so when you guys want to add it to render queue i would just go to composition and then add to uh media encoder queue and i'm gonna press that just like so then when it opens up you guys want to make sure you guys download the actual web and plugin in the description down below if you guys do not have the web and plugin it's basically like a really cool plugin that just makes it's super easy for you guys to actually have the uh, lower file size and for obs to really easily handle the actual file to kind of keep on rotating and rotating and rotating it because if you didn't have it if you did it with an a avi file or something like that it'll make it maybe it might it might like lag or something like that you don't want that this is simple as that okay so once you guys have it open a media encoder i'm going to go over here press this little thing right here on the format it should just say web m just like so we want web m and for web m i like to just have my method right here on consistent or constrained quality excuse me take my bit rate and just put this really 75 percent of the way scroll down then we want to make sure if you are have any weird transparency in this actual layer or this overlay you just want to make sure you of course have an uh, enable alpha channel but there is no alpha channel for us so we don't need to do so but i'm going to use uh max render quality and uh yeah once i just actually save my output i can press ok and i can just press render and boom you guys got yourself a really dope and simple overlay to go ahead and put on your stream so Hopefully that was very easy to follow and hopefully it wasn't too long at all, but that's just all I wanted to give you guys is a really cool, simple overlay that can make your freaking stream just look a little bit more cleaner and give you, get rid of the border. The border, I don't know, for me, for all my clients these past like few months or so, I've been going no border and just like a nice simple bar right on the bottom and customizing it just as that. And uh, realistically, you can do as much as you guys want with your actual overlay. I just want to make it just uh, give you guys a little bit of an insight of how to make a very simple animation with it as well. And uh, yep. That's it. Hope you guys do enjoy today's video today. If you guys did, don't forget to leave a like on the video. And I'll tell you guys later. So that's for HQL. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love.